Hi, so this is Princess, and we're doing a fairly interesting surgery on her today, so I thought I'd, I'd get you to come and watch. And the surgery is the removal of this eye. And why are we removing it? Basically, she has an allergic condition called periodic ophthalmia, also called moon blindness, and she's lost the sight in the eye in spite of everything that, that was uh, done for her, and she's now in incredible pain, and therefore uh, we have to remove that eye. Now, she's 30 years old. Uh, she's full of life, healthy, 100% otherwise. So horses do really, really, really well without one eye, uh, amazingly well. They can still compete in, in a lot of different things. With thoroughbreds, it's illegal to compete, but standard breads or trotters, whatever you want to call them, can compete uh, all over Australia with one eye. Now, um, the question I'm often asked is, well, wouldn't you euthanise a horse rather than taking its eye out? And my answer to that is, well, why would you? If you've got a healthy horse of, of whatever age, uh, removing an eye so may, may sound horrific, but she could live another five or ten years, and for the sake of a, a half an hour, an hour worth of surgery, uh, she could just live happily ever after, as it were. Now, there's two ways to take eyes out. One is with the horse on the ground under anaesthetic, and, and the other one is standing. Horse anaesthetics are very traumatic. Um, they have some risk associated with them. They're quite uncontrolled because they're such a large animal and, and hard to handle. So it's much better with general anaesthetics if they're sent to a an operating facility or something like that. And with a horse like Princess, who um, has only ever been on a float once in her life, that's just unrealistic, especially now that we've got COVID here and the operating uh, surgery is so far away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in most horses, we do the surgery standing. Um, I think I've taken one eye out under a general anaesthetic and 20 or 30 out standing. And horses do really, really well with the procedure. Um, it is very gory, so if you don't like blood, don't watch the rest of this video. And um, But yeah, we'll keep you informed and keep you in on the important bits. Uh, Felicity is filming and will be assisting as well, so you may miss out on some stuff when she has to assist. The first thing we're going to do is give her some antibiotics, preoperatively, intravenously, so they're in and working by the time we get ready to um, operate, and some pain relief, and then she'll be very, very, very heavily sedated, and we'll put nerve blocks around her eye that will paralyse uh, her eye and the muscles around that eye, and also take away the pain. So it's just like you or me going to the dentist and getting a nerve block. So let me get set up for that now, and we'll see you again shortly. You right? Yeah. So Princess is heavily sedated, as you can see, and we're doing a series of nerve blocks around the eye. I don't know if you noticed, and I've already put a few of them in. I don't know if you noticed earlier that her eye wasn't open, uh, and now it is open, and that's because I've blocked it, and the pain from this horrible disease is uh, under control for the time being. So... Just a number of blocks all around this eye so that you can't feel anything. I've also put a block in here with the major nerve that leads to this two thirds of the eye. And in a minute, I'm going to put a block behind the eye um, and we'll do a three part or a four part block behind the eye. Um, and that's quite an exciting <laughs> block. I'll show you how we do that once I get ready for it. So I'll see you again shortly. I'm now doing a retrobulbar block. And this needle has to go all the way to the back of the eye, to the behind the eyeball. So that's a three and a half inch needle. Um, and that's going to paralyze the back of the eye and the main nerve to the eye, the optic nerve, is right at the back there. Now she's still moving her eyelid a little bit. There's a lot of pressure in, in the back of that eye. But all those nerve blocks haven't kicked in yet. Those nerve blocks haven't kicked in yet. 
They will shortly. That's again in the back of the eye. She's only feeling a little bit. That's why she's moving a little bit. Um, and this block will take care of all that. While um, I've got your attention, you may notice that she doesn't have any drapes on. And you may be asking, you know, why that is. Well, some people that do this surgery will drape. Certainly if she was under a general anaesthetic, we would drape. But other people don't drape. And it's about a 50-50 uh, toss-up. So um, those of us who don't, those who do drape often find that, oops, let's back it up. I don't drape and a lot of the people that I know who don't drape don't use drapes because uh, all the horse has to do is shake its head and the drapes fly everywhere and um, and the horse gets startled. And so th that's why I don't drape. Now the downside of not draping is you haven't got a sterile surgical field. But this is, and I've talked about this before anyway, clean contaminated surgery. We're as sterile as we can be, but we know that we're going to break sterility um, accidentally. So that's why she's had pre-op antibiotics. They'll be well and truly working by now. And so that's why we don't drape, just in case you're asking that question. I have to get that needle right in the back of the eye socket. Okay, so you can see she didn't react this time. So that local's kicking in really well. So now we need to do a sterile surgical prep. We've only done the first stage at this stage. So we'll turn the camera off while we do a surgical prep and then we'll get started on the surgery. Okay, we're back and we've just started. The first thing I've done is I've trimmed off the eyelid margin, top and bottom. And now I've got a shell right down. We're just about to move the light because it's, I'm standing in my own light. So I need to shell this eyeball out. So you see I get my finger all the way to the back. The eyeball has muscles. It has six muscles. Um, holding it in the socket. There's four straight ones and they're actually called the, the straight muscles and then there's two oblique ones. So I'd like to take them, I, I want to cut them off the eyeball and leave them in the socket because when I do that they will actually add a bit of substance to the socket otherwise the, uh, the socket will be totally empty. So Sky's just moved that light which has made life a heck of a lot easier. Now you can see that no one's holding her. Um, she's um, uh, not moving, so she's in no pain at all. She can probably feel some pressure from what I'm doing, but that's about all. Here's one of these muscles that I was talking about that's attaching to the back of the eye. So I want to cut that muscle. I have really bad um, RSI in my wrists and fingers, so sometimes using those tissue forceps that I was using can be really hammer my forearm. So that's why I will swap to something like this to make holding a bit easier. I've almost got the whole eye detached now. That muscle gone. I've got most of the muscles. There's another one. Just want to get that. As I said, trying to leave as much of the muscle in the socket as possible so that she has a bit of filling in that socket. We don't do um, we don't do um, prosthetics in horse eyes, and they do have them now for dogs. There's some more muscle. You see, this eyeball is rotating quite, is rotating now, just as all those muscles have been cut. And so, the only thing that's holding it in the socket is right at the back, there is the, the optic nerve. <laughs> So even though she can't feel this, she's quite 
conscious is reacting to the other horses around. <laughs> okay, so there we have the eyes wall. You don't want to keep it? I'd love to look at it if okay. you can put it in something. Uh, put it on the swap yeah, too. thanks. All right. So now the next step, uh, the next important step is to remove this thing here called the third eyelid. The third eyelid is one of the major tear producing parts of the eye. So if I leave that third eyelid, and, and it's got a gland in it that produces tears, um, which is here. So if I leave that in, then she will constantly be weeping from this eye. Not much, just a little tickle. Um, but we'll try and protect that by amputating or removing whatever word you like to use, the third eyelid and all the glands. The, the, the gland removal of the eye, the tear staining, if she had it, would be purely cosmetic. It's not a medical problem or anything else. Um, but still, we're going to do it. Let's do it to the best degree possible. Okay, we're back again. And we're on the home straight. Um, when you take the eye out, there's quite a, a dip in the, in the, you know, the, there's a lot of substance missing to the socket, if that sort of makes sense. Um, so if I don't, so what I, the body will fill this Face up with fluid, and uh, it just naturally does that when it is a hole somewhere, it doesn't like it, it's filled up with something. And so I want to um, get all these muscles and stitch them all together to try and uh, do what we technically call obliterate the dead space. And that's what I'm doing, is stitching anything in there back together. Uh, to you know, occupy some space in that socket so we don't have any, as I said, what we call dead space. And then once this is done, we'll stitch the lids up, we'll put a bandage on this old girl for a few days, you don't have to put a bandage on. In a lot of cases, I have not done that. Um, but it just puts a little bit of pressure over the eye socket to um, help control the bleeding. As I said earlier, without drape, the suture material is touching some bits and pieces and is obviously becoming contaminated. But she had antibiotics an hour before we started the surgery. And that's given it enough time to get in. And um, no, I'm not happy with that. That's given the antibiotics enough time to get in and, and uh, you know be circulating in here before uh, we get in and start surgery. So infection is always a possibility, but it's rare. There lots of flies around, and this is the middle of summer. Then infections are much greater possibility, but you know it's a lovely, cool, rainy April day, and um, there's no flies. Aftercare is fairly simple. Uh, she, as I said, she had pain relief and antibiotics before we operated. You saw that, and then she'll have antibiotics after surgery and um, and pain relief after surgery. Stitches will come out in a fortnight. So we'll stay in a small yard or a box or something like that for a little while till she gets adjusted. But you know she doesn't really need a lot of adjustment because she's been blind in that eye for two months. Um, 
She's had drops in for the last couple of months as well, and she's become a bit head shy and a bit narky because of that. She's, her temperament's changed because of all the pain she's had and the handling she's had to have. So um, she's going to be a much happier girl, not having to have drops, you know, constantly and being out of pain. We'll turn the video off. This is a little bit unexciting. I'll just show you when we get to doing the, uh, the sutures in the skin. This is a dissolving suture material. It will dissolve in you know, 60 to 90 days, but we're going to take it out. In, in about 10 to 14 days. You can see how well behaved she has been the whole time. And it's lit with her head on this um, stand. You know, she's not reacted at all. It shows you how well those nerve blocks worked. And obviously she's had no pain at all. She's an ideal horse to operate on, just absolutely phenomenal. Some horses even, some horses will fiddle and fart and carry on. Um, but, you know, Princess has been such a doll, and she has been the whole time we've been working with her, she's been a doll. Um, and uh, as I said to her owner when we were talking, now, why would you want to euthanize a perfectly horse, a perfectly healthy, lovely, happy horse that just because she's 30 year old when you can take her eye out and she might live another you know, five or ten years? Just getting the last couple in here now. I think there's about two or three more to go. Then we'll do a clean. The sedation typically last anywhere from an hour to two hours. So it should be coming around shortly. She'll have a meal. I think we've been at this, how long, Felicity? Is about an hour or up now? Yeah. If you've ever had local anaesthetic at the dentist, um, you know that lasts a couple of hours as well. So that'll be here for a little while longer, but not huge amounts. So one of the points I want to make about Princess, and it doesn't go just for her, now we see people coming in with old dogs, well they don't, old dogs and old cats, and I go out and see old horses on a regular basis, and people will say, oh they're 15, you know, they're going to die soon, you know, they've got a small lump, we shouldn't take this lump off. In this case here, you know, she's 30, she's going to die soon, we shouldn't treat the eye. And one of the things I say to people is, you know, if we're talking about a lump on a dog, I say, well, what about if we're having the same conversation in two years' time? Age is not, you know, age is, isn't a death sentence. Um, age that, you know, animals now are, are lasting, living longer than ever before. And as you may or may not know, one of the big things we're about at Highlands is looking after older pets and older horses. It's one of my passions because there's so many things we can do for them to give them a fantastic quality of life. And the big point I want to make is, you know, age is not an impediment, age is not a barrier. So don't think just because your pet is old that they need to, that they're going to die soon or that they're going to be euthanized or need to be euthanized. Anyway, that's Princess's end result. Um, we'll put a bandage on. Um, maybe you want to see it from the front, Felicity. But I think you'll find that in a, when the hair grows back, it'll be very acceptable uh, cosmetically.